Yo, so I'm seeing the setup right now. Uh, I'm seeing pretty much a certified buy coming. I'm gonna start out right here with 160, but I do see a buy coming on Euro USD. Just don't know exactly when it's gonna decide to turn around. So, but we on the uptrend. All right, we got a pullback. So I'm believing the market will eventually shoot back up, but it is a Friday. I normally don't trade on Fridays, but you know, sometimes I get in there and you know, see what the market talking about. See if I can figure it out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So let's let's see how this plays out. 24 seconds left. See if we can get a good push up. So all we need is one push. I mean, a better push than that, though. Two, one, got it, bop. Let me get those. Yeah, so anytime you pulling back like that, y'all, on the uptrend, best time to get in. All right, always going to be the best time to get in. You know I be having to have my little tools. But yeah, anytime the market pulls back from an uptrend, now, I'm not saying we're going to go way up here because it is a Friday and you just never really know. But if the market does that, okay, so like I showed y'all market structure before, you know, the market comes up, pulls back, goes higher, pulls back, goes higher, pulls back. This one just skyrocketed out of there. Did a small pull back here, kept going, and then pulled back. So logically, probably go up somewhere around here or something and, and then dip. Now, if I go look at a higher time frame, uh, hold on, let me make sure. If I go look at a higher time frame, okay, so now you see on the M15, the stochastic is pretty high here and these candles are, this candle was outside the Keltner, so this one had to pull back in so, but you notice that most of the time the candles don't come down here that often. They usually stick a little bit above the Keltner, right? They touch the middle here every now and then, but for the most part, they drop to about right in here on the M15 and they go back up. But I do feel like since this is a downtrend on the uh, M15, because the candles are below the 200, I do feel like long term it's going to be a sell off though. So I'll keep that in mind for sure. But hey, so far we, we was right. You know what I'm saying? I've been having a great trading week. Been growing this account uh, since $1,000. And now you see we up 4,000. So power of compounding when you, you know, decide to do it and not withdraw. Sometimes I just compound up. Sometimes I take a big hit and then I have to start back fresh. But lately I've been going in. You know what I'm saying? I've been going to town. But, uh, yeah. Uh, one thing I want to note to y'all is that uh, Euro USD, AUD, USD, and GBP USD correlation, uh, they usually all move the same for the most part. So you'll notice we all got the same pullback up and then AUD, same pullback up. Euro USD, same pullback up. They all kind of pretty much do the same thing at the same time. So definitely keep that in mind. Uh whenever you're trading. Uh, people was asking me as far as my Keltner channel, why I look different now. Uh, it's the same. My only thing I did was go to style and I did the top for sale, basically red, middle, white, and then the bottom green to buy uh, and then save that, you know, just to add a little more sauce to it. Ain't nothing, nothing too different, nothing too crazy. Uh, this was a great buy though right here. A great buy. I should have doubled up on there. I ain't gonna lie to you. Should have went crazy on it. Let's go to, let's see what this M15 look like. Okay. So this M15 is hitting a zone. So let me show you the zone right here. This whole area right here is a zone, y'all. That's an M15 zone. So yeah, it should be dropping here soon unless it decides to push out of that zone so 
I'll grab one of these, put that there, probably make it a little smaller. Make it a little bit smaller like that. Uh, I do see other ones here. You know what I'm saying? And I do this. Since this is an M15 zone, I guess I could change the color of that because I don't want to confuse people, boom. Do mine by the color. So I'll put that there. And so we did, we are, we are getting that drop um, here. But what I do notice is that on the M1, like where we are now, we usually come down to the bottom of this Keltner and we try to push back up. Bingo. Dang it, I was just about to catch it. You see that? Oh, I was just about to catch it for that one minute. Salty. And so when it comes to this, like, um, this Keltner channel, so that's this blue shadow, y'all. All right. Again, you use this to monitor your trades. So you can monitor where the market is going. So, for instance, this blue line here, I mean, this white line in the middle, is considered, you know, a 20 moving average. Okay. So whenever the candles go above it, right, when they go above this white line, or your, your blue line in the middle, if it stays above, it usually sticks above for a while, right? Because the 20 moving average usually carries it, right? If we break through the middle and we don't break through the bottom, then you know it's going back up, okay? So always keep that in mind. And just always watch the pattern on the Keltner channel. That'll help you out a lot. So if the market is moving up and it starts to pull back, but you notice on the Keltner that it only comes close to the middle of it, and then it goes right back up, it usually repeats that pattern multiple times. As you can see here, close to the middle, came through just a little bit, went back up, close to the middle, close to the middle, close to the middle, close to the middle. This one broke through and then came right back to the middle and started going back up. This one close to the middle and went right back up. So always, you know, utilize your Keltner channel for that kind of stuff as well, uh, cause it'll help you out a lot. I think by the time the zigzag form on this one, it's gonna mess around and go back up. Mm. Could have been a good one minute probably. Or, or we could be selling back down again, which I can mess around and hop in on that sale joint. Maybe that M1 just trying to get his little, yeah, I think we still got room to go down though, I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm gonna sell off twice matter of fact I'll sell off twice I don't know if that uh that buy gonna be that strong if the buy happens the highest we probably can go is about right in here before it turns back around for a sale so I still think that zigzag need to form on the uh M5, so I think we still got a little bit more room to push down, but we're gonna see. Oh. Move this back. Zoom in a little bit so y'all can see. Four, three, two, one. Got him and got you. Let's get this money. Stop playing with me in these markets. Wait on setups. Look at it. Now, why in the heck did you take that trade? Do, do y'all realize why I took that one? If you don't, let me reiterate. I still feel like, which I could be wrong, but based on how hard it pushed on this M5, I feel like it needs to push a little bit more. That zigzag, which is this orange line right here, I feel like that zigzag needs to form this way, right? Then I feel like we'll get a stronger push up. All right, but I don't know that for sure. But that's just based off, usually based off what I see, usually when the market pushes real hard, it retraces back, sells off, forms a new zigzag, then it finally pushes back up. So I feel like we still just had that that time, you know what I'm saying, to do that. Uh, yeah, so that was my thesis. <laughs> Nerding out on these charts, you hear me? But yeah, I feel like it still got room. I feel like, you know, it's doing a small little pullback now, but I feel like it still got room to drop before uh, 
all that happens. Another reason was this. When I looked at the Keltner channel on the M1, you notice that a lot of these only hit the bottom of the Keltner and drop. Hit the bottom of the Keltner, we got a drop here, boom. Uh, I noticed it comes about one, two, three. So somewhere in these areas here is usually where we get a drop it. So if it didn't drop here, then my next entry is probably would have been between here or here for a sale. So I use that Keltner like I told y'all. Usually, like I said, this is a buy zone, uh, which it was. I mean, you did get a small buy here, but based off the Keltner and what I was looking at, that's what I came up with. So that's why I took that trade. But as you can see, man, smacking the charts over the head for the past few days. Nine stop. And I think I'm done for today. I don't, that's a good Friday. I ain't going to do nothing else with that. Uh, yeah, God is good. But hopefully you learned something. And uh, comment below what you want to see, and I'll make more videos. Let's get it.